Well, for the past few Sundays, we've been talking about the stories regarding the prophet Daniel. And today's story, or today's reading, takes place at a time when the children of Israel were still captive in the land of Babylon. And you'll remember, or you'll know, that the prophet Daniel became famous for his wisdom. He was able to go to the Lord and interpret dreams and help people. He helped Nebuchadnezzar, the king, by interpreting his dream about the giant statue. And Nebuchadnezzar, in time, <clears throat> came to respect and even worship the Lord. But Nebuchadnezzar's son, Belshazzar, did not respect the Lord. When he became king, he held a great feast for all his friends, and he used the good silver vessels that had been taken from the temple in Jerusalem for his party. Now, let's think about that for a second. What I have here is the cup that we use for Holy Supper. And the plate. Now, these are just regular things. They're silver things. But I think most of you who've been to Holy Supper here in the church would feel a kind of affection for these things. These are special. When we go to Holy Supper, it's a very special event, and people feel very strongly about it. And we like these things. And if we found out that someone had broken into the church and stolen these things and taken them to their house and had a party and put a peanut butter sandwich on this, was drinking Coke out of this, and was whistling to loud music and dancing around, we'd be very unhappy. That would be very disrespectful. Disrespectful for our worship and for the, and for the Lord, because these are things that we use to connect ourselves with the Lord. And that's what Belshazzar did. The, when they had conquered the children of Israel, they went into the temple and they stole all the gold and silver. And they brought it back to Babylon. And Belshazzar went and got that stuff and said, ha, huh, I don't care about those people. I'm going to insult them and do this. And he took the gold and silver from the temple and used it in a party. We'll put it here so you can see it. <clears throat> the story continues. This is from Daniel 5. Belshazzar the king made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in the presence of the thousand. While he tasted the wine, Belshazzar gave command to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple which had been in Jerusalem that the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought the gold vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of God, which had been in Jerusalem. And the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised gods of gold and silver, bronze and iron, wood and stone. In the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance changed, and his thoughts troubled him. So the joints of his hips were loosened, and his knees knocked against each other. <clears throat> so <clears throat> this hand appeared. He's worshiping and, and disrespecting the things from the temple in Jerusalem. And suddenly a hand, just a hand, appears and writes something on the wall. And he looked at it, and he was terrified. It says his, his knees knocked together. So he was terrified, and he asked his advisors to tell them, well, what does this mean? And he offered them rich rewards. He said, I'll give you a million dollars if you tell me. But no one knew what the language was. The words that were written were in a language that no one knew. So they couldn't read it, and they couldn't interpret it. So the queen heard what was happening and came into the banquet hall, and she reminded him that it was Daniel who had been able to help Father Nebuchadnezzar when he had that dream that frightened him. So they said, get Daniel. Bring Daniel here and see what he says about this. So Daniel was brought into the hall. The handwriting's still up on the wall. And the king offers Daniel treasures and honors if he would interpret the writing. But Daniel refused it all. He said, he reminded Belshazzar that Nebuchadnezzar had been a great king and that all the peoples and nations had trembled before him. But, but he, 
Belshazzar had become too proud, so he had to have his kingdom taken away from him. And then Daniel speaks directly to Belshazzar. I'm going to read again from Daniel. He says, but you, his son Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this. And you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. They have brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords and your wives and your concubines have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which do not see or hear or know. And the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. Then the fingers of the hand were sent from him, and this is what was written. And this is the inscription that was written. I'm going to stop for a moment and put it on the screen. So imagine this hand coming along. I'm not going to do it magically. I'm just going to write it. And he said, the first word was, wrote that down, mene. And he did it again. Perhaps it was kind of slow and dramatic. I don't know, but third word was And then the fourth word was this. Does that make any sense to anybody? And of course, even to the wise men in, in Babylon, this was a language that they'd never seen. These were words they didn't know. So what did Daniel say? Then the fingers of the hand were sent with him, and, and this was, was written. In the inscription that was written, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Eupharsin. This is the interpretation of each word. Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then Belshazzar gave the command, and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. And that very night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain. And Darius the Mede received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. So, <clears throat> what does all this mean? Here, I'll make this easier. Let's put this in, knowing what Daniel is interpreting... He wrote a loony, yes, really, a loony, a penny, and 50 cents. There, that makes it much clearer. So what he's saying, first of all, was the way Daniel interpreted this is he said, your kingdom and your father's kingdom had value. It was worth a loony, a dollar. It had value, and it had been going. The Babylonian kingdom has had value for, for many generations. Loony, loony. It says, but you, Belshazzar, compared to what's before, you're only worth a penny. And you know how bad pennies are. We don't even have them in Canada anymore. So, he's a penny. Belshazzar is a penny. And it says, and what's going to happen in the future? 50 cents. That's half a dollar, right? He says, your kingdom's going to be divided between the Medes and the Persians. And that's the prophecy. Babylon has done a great job. You're worthless. And your kingdom is going to be divided. That was the prophecy. Now, what does this mean for us? Each of us in the Word is the king in our own kingdom. And as the king of our own kingdom, as the person who makes choices of free will in our own lives, we make decisions about what's going to happen 
and the things that we're going to do. And at the end of our earthly life, we're going to be judged. This is what's happening with Belshazzar. You know, here's what's going on, here's you. At the end of our life, we're going to be judged. So what will be the handwriting on the wall for us? We'll be doing our job and being responsible and doing what the Word says and being led by the Lord and making good choices? Or are we going to be the kind of person like Belshazzar who takes the precious things of the church and mocks them and decides to do their own thing and never humbles himself before the Lord? Because that's what, what happens if you do that is your kingdom is taken away and divided. That's the prophecy there. So what we need to do is realize that this is about us and the choices that we make in the world. And While we're still here, we can make those choices and decide whether or not we're going to be the kingdom that's valuable, that makes good choices, that humbles themselves before the Lord, that doesn't worship idols of gold and silver and wood and bronze, the things of this world, but instead makes the right choices and follows the Lord. Because then we have a better chance. So let's hope and pray that we learn from the mistakes of Belshazzar and others and that we've learned to obey the Lord so that when it comes to our time, when we pass into the other world and we're in the world of spirits, that we're not found wanting and only worth a penny. But instead, that we see that there's some value in the choices we've made and the things we've done to care for others while we are in this world.